Hello and welcome to the Forestry Corporation's Softwood Plantation Value Recovery Training Video. Maximising value recovery from plantation harvesting is a critical part of the forest management life cycle. Growing our crop to final harvest usually takes more than 30 years and the decisions made, the way the tree is harvested and processed, in what often takes less than a minute, has a significant impact on the amount of volume and value recovered. For example, the cutting of stumps a little too high or choosing log lengths that put sections of saw log into pulp reduces recovered volume and value. These little 1% losses add up when taken across the entire forest. This video will help you identify value loss and step you through Forestry Corporation's expectations and standards. It is crucial to act upon any value loss you find and actively manage operations to a high standard. What we all do in the forest makes a difference. Value recovery loss points. Tree falling. Stump height is to be a maximum of 150 millimetres this is an excellent example of a low stump and one that is not. Stumps are measured from the uphill side. For each 5 centimetres left on the stump, it creates roughly, in saw log volume, a loss of 1% on that stem. The difference between 100 millimetre and 250 millimetre stumps is close to $150 per hectare. That is only the stump volume left behind. You get a second value loss at the top of the tree when you could have used that extra length to get another saw log before the small end diameter runs out. It adds up. 1% matters. High stumps are also an operational safety hazard. A forwarder on a maximum side slope can easily be lifted those extra few percent by a high stump and rollover. Site prep operators are impacted by high stumps. Incorrect felling technique can lead to butt log damage, breakage to the stem and or other trees. If a stem breaks or breaks others, it reduces the optimum length combinations that can be cut from affected stems, losing value. The tree should usually be felled into standing trees to reduce its velocity when it hits the ground. Consider using the forward felling method when working next to hardwood windrows. That is, fell the tree parallel to the hardwood windrow rather than over it. Best practice is to direct the tree so that it falls away from windrows, ridge tops and gullies or over previously felled stems. This gives the best opportunity to avoid breakage and recover the full length of the available product. You can't do that if the tree is broken in half. Damage to the large end diameter, such as drawn wood, split ends, slabs, tombstones or flags, can occur if the felling cut is not performed correctly. The log will be damaged due to the tree slabbing or tearing off the stump before the felling cut is completed. If this occurs for saw log products, the damage section will need to be long butted off as waste, therefore value and volume is lost. Damage can also occur if there is no scarf cutting on a leaning or large tree to release its tension before making the back cut. All merchantable trees and other trees must be harvested in line with contractual obligations. However, in certain circumstances, conditions or the situation might not allow for all trees to be felled due to safety, operational or environmental constraints. If uncertain, discuss with the contractor to get clarity as to why some trees have been left standing. Confer with harvesting managers to sort through a workable outcome. Leaving merchantable trees is not only a loss of value and a cost to remove, but isolated or small clumps of standing trees are a significant hazard for aerial spraying operations when the next rotation is being established. All potentially merchantable sections of stem must be processed. This includes, but is not limited to, broken tops during the tree felling and or extraction phase, 
edge trees or trees with large branches, windblown trees. The requirement is to measure pieces to determine if they meet both the minimum length and SED specifications, check all merchantable pieces have been collected from the cutover or processing area and cut into a product. Trees or stems with branches too large to delim with a harvester head should be recovered using an alternative safe approach. Operators are not to intentionally break or cut up any piece so that it won't meet a product spec. Log making. There needs to be clear and regularly discussed operational expectations regarding log making. It is very difficult to achieve or exceed a recovered saw log target that is not known. Constant follow up is required. What is the planned saw log and pulp prediction? How are we tracking against this target? The stick software rolling reconciliation needs to be checked regularly, tracking predicted v actual on a weekly basis and providing feedback on results to the contractor and operator. Volume and value can be easily lost due to unnecessary cuts. Large saw zeroing biscuits and long butting are some examples. This is an excellent example of saw zeroing. The harvester's find end function should be used to reset the computer's length measurement counter rather than saw zeroing, as this function prevents any volume and value from being lost. If the find end function is broken or doesn't have one, the harvest operator is to skim the LED with the main saw so that no more than 2.5 centimetres is cut off. Note, this is an area where a lot of volume and value can unnecessarily be lost, especially when long butting the first and largest diameter log of a stem. If long butting is required, the operator should only cut the minimum amount off the stem so that the product is just in spec. Operators need to fully understand the product specifications and the different product values so that they can correctly decide if a long butt is needed or how much they should cut off to gain a higher value product. What is the allowable waste? Cutting to length or batch cutting and not using the full mix of lengths is a common way of losing value and saw log volume. Cutting to one or two fixed lengths is unlikely to recover all merchantable volume down to the small end diameter specification. The onboard computer optimizer with a well-designed APT file will help achieve this on a good form tree. Let it go. The optimizer is an accurate calculator and will save the operator's decision-making efforts for the poor form stems. If a fork, feature, sweep or other defect prevents full-length optimization, a decision to override needs to be made early, and just processing a long-length log first may not be the best decision. In example 1, a sub-optimal cutting pattern on a tree with a defect at 15.9 metres, the optimizer may choose 6.1, 6.1, and then 3.55 metres of potential high-value saw log ends up as pulp. In example 2, the preferred cutting pattern would be for the optimizer to choose 6.1. Hang on, there is a defect coming. Override the next 6.1 and step back to 5.5 and then a 3.7 to minimise loss of saw log quality wood. Getting as close to the SED of log and pulp as possible is crucial to maximising utilisation of the stem. Variable length combinations are needed to make this happen. It is the key to optimising the value of every tree. Poor calibration of harvest heads leads to incorrect optimising decisions and out-of-spec logs. Calibration of harvest heads ensures they are predicting and processing trees within spec to maximise value recovery. Systematic calibration provides unbiased confidence that harvesting heads are accurately measuring and processing timber. 
It is a contractual obligation to ensure calibration of harvesting head measurement software using electronic calipers as per the manufacturer's guidelines. Operators must complete at least one electronic control measure per shift, comprising all the logs from at least one tree. Calibration makes the harvest head measure and cut more accurately. It is a positive. 10A to G is all about predicted volumes compared to actuals. Achieving or exceeding predicted log volumes is the result of a lot of good work. Changing quality buttons to forced assortments or operating using too many preset length buttons disables optimization. The preferred approach is to use quality buttons to describe the stem as it flows through the head and let the value bucking matrix decide the highest value product. The ability to optimise a stem using quality grade buttons. Ideally, the quality buttons are used to describe the stem as it is being processed, matching qualities to customers' specifications, letting the bucking values choose the highest price product. If the predicted length is not achievable due to a feature, then use plus or minus buttons to utilise available stem length and override the optimizer recommendations. The best value recovery and highest producing operators optimise using quality buttons. It is world's best practice. Cutting one log at a time. The optimizer looks for a length combination to maximise value of the entire stem, not just cut a long log. What's next? Cutting one log at a time using the earlier example, the stem has a defect at 15.9 metres. If 6.1, 6.1 is cut, 3.55 metres of potential saw log ends up in pulp. That's a big loss of volume due to just focusing on one log at a time. If this was done to 200 trees in a day, it would be a value loss of nearly $600. What could you do with $600 extra dollars a day? Overspecking is making logs better or straighter than they need to be. Allowable sweep needs to be recognised on the fly and maximised. That is, cut a swept log so it falls just within allowable sweep. Another example is cutting off butt flare when it is not a spec constraint. If it is in the spec, get your eye in and only cut enough off to meet the specification. The ability to make early decisions on log length combinations to optimally utilise saw log up to a defect, feature or forced cut is crucial to good value recovery. In this example, there is a fork at 9 metres. You can't just let the optimizer choose. It will likely choose 6.1. Oh, oh no, wasted 2.9 metres of high value log. A better option is to go shorter earlier, 4.9, 3.7, and you only lose 0.4 of a metre and you have limited saw log loss. Ideally, four different saw log lengths would be available to reach the SED and deal with poor form. If the full suite of lengths aren't available, you need a short and long option. Early wise decisions are required for poor form and defect trees. If a mistake is made, remember this and try to do better on the next tree. Doing better at every cut, on every tree, on every day will provide more volume and value for all. An extra 1% saw log today builds an extra house tomorrow. The topping saw is to be utilised if contractually required to minimise volume and value loss. The topping saw is very handy when the SED end of the stem needs to be cut due to a broken or shattered top. To maximise pulp wood recovery down to the SED, often using the main saw on small diameter pieces results in breakage or crushing or when the head is approaching forced cuts, such as forks, breaks and defects. Out-of-spec logs being rejected and value lost, 
Although we want to maximise saw log recovery, ideally rejected saw log levels would be less than 5%. It is a must to regularly check measured logs against the specifications, particularly borderline logs to mentally calibrate what in and out of spec looks like. Aids such as the sweep deviation allowance stickers can be a useful way of retaining and cutting to spec. Poor cross-cutting technique leads to damage that needs to be processed out. Drop cutting is a particular high risk practice. The following operational methods minimise the risk of slabbing, splitting, shatter and slovens occurring. Support the stem. Use a stump, rock or other logs as support for the LED end. It may slightly slow down production, but this loss is compensated by not having to recut out of spec damage sections. Ensure that the chain is correctly sharpened. Change a dull chain and carry multiple spare pre-sharpened chains. Ensure that the bar and chain are functioning correctly and are well maintained. Use the harvester's automatic boom lowering function if active on the machine. Only use the drop cutting method when there are no other available options. This method requires significant skill to execute correctly and if there is evidence of defects occurring because of this technique, then the operator must stop and support log ends when cross cutting. Processing in a way not as per the cutting instructions or plan, including cutting to order or a truck configuration rather than value, unauthorised APT file or cut card editing. APT files cannot be edited by contractors or operators without Forestry Corporation approval. Signs that APT files have been edited include there should be four different lengths cut for a customer but there is only one length showing in the harvest head data. Some products are not appearing in head data or only within a certain time range. Fixed length pulp, not utilising all length options to reach allowable SED. Turning waste off so front screen cubic metres for the day is only showing productive volume. Volume and value can be lost if the APT files are changed. Monitor this closely. Normally easy to spot in STIX data, make sure you know what is in the APT file and cut plan for the week or month. Product segregation at the stump. Are products separate? paint marked and stacked in a clear way for the forwarder driver to know what product has been cut in what pile. Check for paint marking and segregation at the point of harvest. It needs to work for each crew. Importantly, the correct product ends up in the correct pile in the correct mill. To minimise the chances of product segregation issues occurring, the harvester operator should separate products that are very similar by putting a product that has a different appearance between them. Stack one product closer in or further out from a similar product. Communicate with the forwarder operator, the method being used, and ensure that no mix-ups can occur. The harvester needs to be fit for purpose. Harvesters are usually contractually required to have a topping saw, which is great for maximising value at the small end and up to breaks. Stand for D optimizer. You wouldn't normally operate on forestry plantations without it. Find end. Eliminates the need for saw zeroing cuts. Softwood specific feed rollers. These don't damage pine logs, which can occur if hardwood rollers are used. A working length wheel. Needs to be in good order and not worn. Lower delimbing knives. Essential for delimbing lower and larger limbs. Working lights. You need to see where you are going and what you are doing if operating at night. The contractor and harvest operator need to have the right tools for the job, including 
a site-specific APT file. Do not start harvesting without it. A copy of the specs. Be able to understand, measure and cut them. A copy of the required log production for the month. A calibrated tape to ensure products are within allowances to measure length, diameter, sweep, branching, features, etc. In addition, the harvest operator needs to conduct quality control checks, question and check under or over spec logs, set them aside for measurement and discussion with the Forestry Corporation supervisor. Be able to use electronic calipers and manually calibrate if required. Sending in a KTR calibration file every day with a harvest head production PRI or HPR file. Forwarding. Are products being collected, stacked and segregated to prevent mixing of different products and lengths? Forwarders are typically manufactured with three to five bolsters that are spaced along the length of the bunk to enable it to carry the full suite of product lengths. Individual bolsters can be removed or shifted so that they are wide apart. If this occurs, you still must be able to safely and efficiently load the full suite of product lengths. If the bolster setup isn't correct, then short length deliveries can fall between the bolsters and increase loading time, take more precision to load the deliveries onto the forwarder. Forwarder operators shouldn't selectively load specific products or lengths which could lead to leaving product in the cutover to lose weight, get stuck or be completely forgotten. The forwarder shouldn't be more than three days behind the harvester. The forwarder operator is to stack the different product deliveries so that there is physical space between each delivery so that even if the pieces were to roll, they won't get mixed with another delivery. Or if two different deliveries must be stacked beside one another, then the operator will have to clearly separate, i.e. two logs placed vertically between the deliveries to form a physical barrier. Unacceptable methods include using a paint mark to separate the different deliveries. The forwarder operator is a critical person in the value recovery chain. Forwarder drivers need to have a copy of product specifications, understand and be able to measure them, know the required log production for the month, conduct quality control checks, what proof is there, question and check borderline logs, leave questionable logs out for discussion and measurement with the forestry supervisor. Have a calibrated tape to ensure products are within allowances. Check measuring length, diameter, sweep, branch size and features. Definitely not load the last little bit of a saw log pile onto the pulp truck to make things easier. Forwarder operators need to be included in log making and discussions on value recovery. The forwarder needs to be fit for purpose. Are there enough bolsters spaced to carry the full suite of lengths? Are the lights adequate for working in low light conditions? Assessing, stacking and loading products correctly is more difficult when you can't see properly. The value recovery challenge is not always easy. As you've seen in this video, there are many issues to consider when optimising the volume and value of the forest, but it has never been so crucial for our long-term sustainability. Tracking, communicating and improving saw log recovery is important and needs to be part of our everyday focus. If we can improve saw log recovery by 1% on every tree, every day, we will help sustain our industry, our community and our people. 1% does matter.